what did I just read? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> the clip that you just saw is from February when I attempted to read the first chapter of Dune. I grew up reading science fiction and it's one of my favorite genres, but the past several years I've been reading mostly fantasy, nonfiction, and some classics. So I wanted to get back into science fiction and I wanted to read some of the staples that are out there that people talk about all the time, some of the books that helped form this genre into what it is now. And so when I saw Adam Savage's book, book video, <laughs> when I saw Adam Savage's video about his favorite science fiction books, I could not help but take all of them on one at a time. So if you are just tuning into my channel, I will have my introduction video linked, um, hopefully in the cards that way. Yes, right there. And then I've already read one book from this list. There are eight books total, and I've already read the first one, which is uh, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I'll have that video linked as well. This one I'm going to do more of a reading vlog style. I think that's just a much more relaxed way for me to talk about books. And I really enjoyed my Left Hand of Darkness video, but it just didn't quite suit what I feel like are my strengths and weaknesses when it comes to me reading books. I think I'm really strong at having opinions as I read the book and being able to talk about those. I just didn't quite enjoy as much putting together all my thoughts at the end of the book and doing more of an essay video approach to it. So I'm going to try like a more chill reading vlog for this one and see how it goes. So that's where we're at. Um, even though I did read the first chapter in February, I have not continued in this book and I'm gonna pick it up now. I have the ebook for this and then I also have it on Audible. So I'll be switching between the two of those. And I think that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Here we go. All right, let's do an update on Dune. I am like six hours into the audiobook, something like that. I'm almost done with part one. I'm on page 279. So my Kindle says that that's 32%. I am enjoying this book way more than I thought I would. I did not have low expectations necessarily, but I also did not think that I would really love it. I thought it would just be okay. I thought that I would appreciate reading just this classic 1965 sci-fi that has done a lot for the genre and it is really beloved. I thought I would appreciate, especially being able to read it before the movie comes out, hopefully later this year. I did find out, by the way, the movie is gonna be split into two parts. And in a little bit of the research I've done about Dune so far, I think that that is a really smart move. Reading a little bit about the backgrounds of the other adaptations, there was a movie adaptation in the 80s that just didn't really do well. There was apparently a 2000, one or 2002 year, uh, year, yeah, that's the year, adaptation on the Sci-Fi Channel that really no one knows about. I mean, I didn't know about it, and I watched the Sci-Fi Channel pretty often. The Stargate, anyone? Uh, yeah. But there is also, um, apparently before the 1980 version, there was also like a, a playwright, not a playwright, a manuscript that just never went to pub, to like, it never got funded, but someone tried to do something with this before even the 1980s one. So yeah, I am definitely enjoying it a lot. I know that I've heard this from several people that the main character being named Jessica is very confusing and pulls them out of the story. And it is a little bit weird because this is 2020. Jessica is just not a name associated with a lot of science fiction. A lot of, Paul is not a name associated with a lot of science fiction. Names like Duncan Idaho, we see t something like that in science fiction still. A name like Leto, we see that in science fiction. But the traditional names like Jessica and Paul, we don't really see in science fiction and I've heard some people complain about that. I don't know quite as much about why he chose Paul to be one of the main characters, but I did do a little bit of research on the name Jessica just because that is something several people complain about and it was a little bit weird to me. And I found out Jessica was really popular in, I believe it was the UK in the, the 1800s, the mid 1800s. And then it kind of faded out of popularity. And guess what? It came back into popularity in the late 1960s and 1970s. And since then has stayed in pretty good popularity. So my theory is that actually Dune, which 
you know, came out in 1965, right before Jessica, like, shot up in the charts, I wonder if Dune was part of influencing our culture to take back the name Jessica. But I just thought it was really interesting, and I wanted to comment on that, not to not to counter anyone, but to add more more to the conversation that I think is really interesting about this book and the impact that it gives. Also, it takes place on a desert world. Could that have been the inspiration for Tatooine in Star Wars? You know, Star Wars came out in like, what, the late 80s, the mid 80s? I should have looked that up, but I also just thought of that right now. <laughs> and I record on my phone. Could, what is it, Ericus? Er Adaris? Ooh, that's embarrassing. Ericus. <laughs> Could Ericus be part of the inspiration behind Tatooine? I don't know. Maybe. I think that is really cool. So even, oh man, and on Tatooine, there's that monster in the pit. And in Ericus, there are worms under the sand that occasionally come up and, you know, eat people. So Anyway, okay, what do I think about Dune so far? Those are actually a lot of my thoughts about Dune so far. The story is really compelling. It is basically this story of a war between the two families that are vying for control on Ericus. It is a story about family. I just said that, but I mean in the family. Uh, Jessica, Leto, Paul... It's a story about politics. Jessica and Leto aren't married because Leto is a duke. So she is his concubine, actually, and that leaves him available to marry for advantage. So there is this political, you have political stuff built in there. One thing I like about Dune is that it is easier to follow the political intrigue than a lot of the books I read that are heavy with political intrigue. There's a dinner scene I was listening to this morning where... Jessica is um, suspecting like someone of being a spy and she's trying to like figure out what, why he's there and um, the Duke gets called away for some reason and he, he says this statement to Jessica and Paul that they understand what it means, they understand the code behind it and it, it is actually very easy to follow those things that are happening and to understand what the author is extrapolating about people's motives and what they're doing. And I think part of that is because this author depends on, I think it's called the third person omnipresent voice where in one chapter you can hear multiple people's thoughts. Um, he'll, he'll have a statement, Jessica thought blah, 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 blah about the banker. And then two pages later, he'll say, Paul thought this thing about the Duke. And so it helps you get inside people's head a little bit. He only does that for like a number of characters at a time. It's not everyone, but the focus is of each chapter. He'll do that. And I, I actually really like it for a book that is this heavy in politicking and in family dynamic and in rivalry and having to follow people's motivations. It's really helpful for me as a reader to be able to anchor this is what this person's thinking and doing this is what their internal motivation is and this is why they're choosing these actions and i so yeah i really appreciate that i like the writing style it's easy to read and to listen to and um yeah it's just a really really interesting book so far and i feel like i kind of expected it to be long and a little dry and really hard to read <laughs> and so maybe I'm enjoying it in part because my expectations were so low and so it's not hard for my expectations to be surpassed but I'd like to think that there is more to it than that and that there is this reality that is still just a very well done story so I don't know though like I said, just shy of 300 pages in. The ebook e version is 796 pages, so that puts me three sevenths through, or you know, 32%, which my Kindle is claiming. But that includes some of the appendices. So without the appendices, I guess I'm more like what 40% in. So anyway, that's enough rambling. This is a really long check-in, but I just had a lot of thoughts about it so far, and. Um, my dog is being really cute now that she's no longer barking at the crazy Yorkie that came over and pooped five feet from our window. 
she had a bath earlier today and she was um, not the happiest dog for a hot second there. So, okay, that's pretty much everything. I'll check in later. Do you see how long my hair is getting? I don't think you guys have context for the fact that normally my hair is like, I can't even, I can't even make my hair look short. There, like this, there we go. That's kind of normally my hair. That was terrible. I might edit that whole part out. We're here to talk about Dune. All right, I have like 60 pages left in Dune. I've been switching between the ebook and the audiobook. I think I already said that. So I have like an hour left in the audiobook or something like that. Look, look, I, look, this book is so much better than I thought it was going to be. And here again, I think I said this before, it's not like I expected this book to suck. I did not expect this book to suck. I just did not expect to enjoy it very much. I thought I would just read it and be like, cool. We did that. We read a classic sci-fi. I liked it. I moved on. <sighs> this book is so good. This book is so good. I can't say more about spoiling it, so I'll just save those thoughts for later. I, I did, I just, I, uh, am I gonna make one of those videos that's like most surprising reads of 2020 and Dune is gonna be the number one most surprising read of 2020? I have a feeling I'm gonna give this book four stars. Like, for how much I'm loving it, I don't think it's going to truly be a favorite. I think a portion of my feeling about loving it is simply the fact that I expected not to. <laughs> but I, I, I don't genuinely think this will become, like, one of those all-time favorites. But time will tell. It's like six or so months after I read a book, up to a year, six months to a year. That's when I can tell what books have stuck with me. Really, it'll be the end of 2020 at the minimum to see if, you know, this is my Kindle cover. That's fine. Be the end of 2020 to see if Dune really stuck with me. All right, I have officially finished Dune. I'm gonna wrap up my non-spoiler thoughts. I've sat on it for a couple of days now. Okay, here are my final thoughts. One, the audiobook was fantastic. That was a very well done audiobook. It's the one on Audible. And Scribd, for some reason, did not have it, even though it had everything else in that series. So I think that's a little silly. But I listened to it on Audible. The audiobook was so well done. That is an excellent audiobook. Not all of the chapters have a full cast, because not all the chapters like need a full cast, but the book does have a lot of paragraphs that involve it's third person omnipresent. I've mentioned this before. That means that you in one chapter hear up to two or three different characters thoughts during that chapter. That made it really easy to track a lot of things and keep up with internal motivation, which is really good because this book has so much to it that I think if you weren't able to hear characters thoughts, you'd lose even more <laughs> of the story. Like there would be a lot of things that are just very confusing. And the audiobook was done really well where it had even characters' thoughts were read in that character's voice. So, well, for most of the chapters, there were some chapters where it would, again, it would only be like one character's thoughts. And so you wouldn't have those different voices in there. But I really liked that. It made it really easy to follow, really easy to track. I really enjoyed this book. Going into it, I think my expectations were kind of low. I expected to walk out of it giving it like maybe 2.5 or 3 stars, which is average, okay? Like out of so a scale to 1 to 5, 2.5 is the middle. That is average. That's not bad, <laughs> okay? I'm just saying. But yeah, I expected to just be able to give it like an average rating. And I thought that what I would glean from it was an understanding of one of these beloved stories and an, um, a respect and appreciation for how it has impacted the sci-fi genre in the years since its publication in 1965. What I did not expect was to love this story so much. This has everything in it that I love. Like, okay, I love epic high fantasy. Okay, Stormlight Archives is probably one of my favorite series of all time. It is one of my favorite. I don't know why I'm saying probably. It is one of my favorite series of all times. And it's one of the few series on my favorites list that is not there because of nostalgia because I read it last year. Most of the other series on that list are nostalgic. 
right? That's the why they're some of my favorites is because of my emotional attachment to it. Stormlight Archives is on that list because it is just that good. Dune was kind of like the sci-fi classic, sci-fi equivalent of Stormlight Archives, at least as far as the world building, the assessment of economic, ecological, and political impact of things, exploring the motivations of all the different characters, dealing with cause and effect of different things, like the scale that this story was at is at a scale, a lot like the Stormlight Archives, and I really loved it. If you really like epic high fantasy, you might like Dune. <laughs> it is, I would call it epic high science fiction, you know? Like we should have a term like that, you know? Cause we've got low fantasy, urban fantasy. We do have urban sci-fi, but there's low fantasy and high fantasy where it's like our world with fantasy elements versus like a story set in another world. And then we have epic fantasy for books like The Wheel of Time and for Stormlight Archives. Is there terminology like that for sci-fi? I think there should be. I'm going to start using it. <laughs> That's just what I want to do. So Dune is like an epic high sci-fi akin to epic high fantasy, but it's a sci-fi story. Okay. I think one weakness of this book is that it doesn't really explain more than just Ericus. You know that something's going on with the Reverend Mother and her group of people. You know that they have power. And it's kind of hinted as to why, but that's not fully explained. And you know that there's an emperor and the history is kind of hinted at, but that's not really explained. And you, you know that they, they have to have some sort of special way of traveling so quickly across space, but that's not really explained. And I'm assuming that those are things that are all explained in later books. I watched this one video, I'll link it below, that talked about like the world of Dune and the story of Dune without like uh, spoiling anything that actually happens. And it was about five minutes long and it did a great job explaining the world that we're set in and filling in context that was either too subtle or that I just missed in Dune. But also Dune though is not, it's, that book itself is not about the universe of Dune. It's about the planet of Dune. And so some of these things are nice to fill in because it helps me have a greater grasp on what's happening in the world at large, but it's not actually necessary to the story of Dune. Okay. So anything that I now understand about the Dune universe, I just appreciate knowing, but it did, I did not lose out on the story with it not being in the book Dune because the book Dune is just about the story of Dune, that planet, Ericus, and what happens there. That's the end of my spoilery part. So I'm going to launch into the non-spoiler clips that I've recorded. If you haven't read it and don't want it spoiled for you, you need to click off right now. I'm warning you right now. Okay, bye. So I actually recorded a clip already while I was reading it Friday. And I'm going to input that here to kick off spoilers. Spoilers are coming. Let's try again. Okay, this is the beginning of the spoiler section. There's a dog here on my lens. I just have to say a couple of things real fast. Everyone dies. Not literally, but like almost everyone dies. His son died. Paul's son is dead. His sister just told the Baron, Paul's son is dead. His dad had died. All the people died. All the, all the, everyone dies. Jessica hasn't died yet. Neither has Paul. But I'm sure the Baron's gonna die because he's the bad guy, supposedly. He's the antagonist. I don't know if he's a bad guy, but he's the antagonist. Is Paul gonna die? Is Jessica gonna die? Is Aaliyah, Paul's sister, the little one, who's like four, is she gonna die? They're all gonna die. I think they're all gonna die. I need to stop. Okay. Okay, so I haven't watched that clip back since I took it, but I remember talking about everyone dying. <laughs> that is another reason that I would call this an epic high fantasy because in real, no, an epic high science fiction, because in really good epic high fantasy, people, they're not afraid to kill off characters. I love the fact that the, that people die in the book. That sounds terrible. Why? is Cheney not introduced sooner. Like that girl's introduced like 60% through the book and I love her. And it's like so sad that she's not introduced sooner. Jessica is amazing. I love Jessica. I love Jessica so much. 
I really do. One of my, one of the YouTube channels that I like to watch is Mooney Reads, loves Dune. She said it's one of her favorite science fiction books all the time. In fact, earlier this morning, I watched her latest video as of now filming this, which is like science fiction recommendations. And I've read like half of them and I put the other half on my TBR so fast. She talked about how one of the things she appreciates about it is watching Jessica process through like, my child might be like the savior of this planet how do I help him achieve that? But not like, I forget exactly how she worded it because she's so much better at words than I am. But basically I think it was like, how do I help him achieve that? But not shelter him, but also not put him in this place of like pride or prejudice or like, pride or prejudice? Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, not put him in this place of like being spoiled or like presumptive of anything. She has much better wording on it. If you want to hear her thoughts on Dune, I'll, I'll make sure to link that sci-fi recommendations video in the, in the down below because it was really, really, really good. I love Jessica though. I love watching her process through everything. She's like really confident and really humble at the same time and you see her be afraid. I related to her a lot more than Paul or even Chaney. Like Chaney's just, she's young. She's like 15, 16 or 17, somewhere in there. And the things that she deals with, while I love Cheney, they're not the they're not what I deal with anymore. That's actually another thing about this book that is really brilliant is like each of the characters is grappling with things that are realistic to their life stage. Paul, yes, he's like a teenager, and yet he's supposed to be the savior of this world, Dune rescue the people. He he has to make decisions that are older than his age, but not in a bad way. Like he's not aged up. He's still a 15, 16 to 20 year old. There's a time jump somewhere in there. So he's like somewhere between 15 and 20 throughout the book. He's still grappling with those choices in the mind space of someone who is that age. At least that's what it felt like to me. I'm just rambling now. I didn't script any of this. So, you know, here we are. Also, the fact that once you're addicted to spice, you're forever addicted to spice. That was brilliant. It was terrifying, which is why it's like a brilliant thing to write in. And the fact that like spice is what lets you be able to predict which wormhole to go through to travel in space. That was so cool. So that's pretty much it. That's really all there is to the spoilers. Anyway, those are all my thoughts about Dune and I really hope you enjoyed hearing all of them. Next, I'm gonna take on the three body problem. That's the next one in my Sa Savage Sci-Fi Favorites project that I'm doing. It's also part of Medievalathon, so I have to complete that one this month. There's two weeks left in May, so I'm not worried about completing it which is good. <laughs> I was definitely a little worried. I was originally going to read Three Body Problem first, and Dune was one of those books that if I just didn't get to in May, that was okay with me. I would read it in, Dune, in June, but then it, you know, came in in the library ebook like way early, and I didn't want to have to wait another like, you know, six weeks to get it back out from the library. So I had to reverse the order of those, which is why Dune is next and not Three Body Problem. But I am reading the Three Body Problem next and that is the end of the books that I can easily get my hands on. So between now and the next video, I'm gonna have to do some research to figure out how to get a hold of some of these other books. Hmm, anything else? I'll have Adam Savage's original video listed in the description box. I have both of my previous videos about this introduction and my thoughts on Left Hand of Darkness. I also created a playlist on my channel that is just this project's videos and all of the videos will be in that playlist as we go. I think that's pretty much everything. So thanks for tuning in, tuning in. Thanks for listening to all my thoughts about Dune. I was blown away again by how much I enjoyed this book and I actually want to reread it. I have to see how it sticks with me over time to see if it's really truly going to be like a reread book. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're having a lovely day. I hope you're doing a good job taking care of yourself and caring about the people around you. Um, please, you know, like, subscribe, comment, all of that. I would love to hear your thoughts on the book Dune if you've read it. Also, how hyper are we for the movie? Because now I'm real hype for it. <laughs> oh man. So that's pretty much everything. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you later.